take a minute and thank everyone for, for coming. Uh, we're really excited about today and uh, some things that we've done here at our facility for the last uh, year or so. Uh, implementing the production coach software and it's worked great with the other softwares we have. We worked right in with our equipment. Um, so many things, but there's a lot of moving parts. Implementation was very simple and it was, it was a very good experience for us. So we want the opportunity to share that uh, with everybody here. Uh, we're going to show you kind of how we do the whole process. We've had a few questions. Um, our design or uh, engineering software is Microvellum, hands off the production coach, and how those, those systems work very well together. This is how we used to sort our parts as we cut our parts. And I see a few smiles out there. I think maybe some other people sort their parts kind of the same way. They come off the saw. Uh, they're just kind of any which way. Go through the edge band or they're stacked up. The problem is, is at this point, what do you do with these parts? It's kind of a mess. Um, so you end up numbering all the parts. They all have labels on them. We've been printing uh, labels with the saw and the router for, for years. And then we transfer the cabinet number to the edge of the part so the guys can put the right, with the proper sides together, the bottoms, the backs. You know, another great way to sort parts is stack around tables, right? Um, here's more parts. You know, and you can see maybe, uh, um, maybe this 1604, you know, it's, it's in here somewhere. It's, or 14, these are the 1400 numbers. Uh, you'll see the different parts and it's just a mess. And the challenge is, is so many times, you know, you have um, the base cabinets, for example, on a job. Once they've determined the size of their typical base cabinet, they'll have several, several hundred rights and several hundred lefts, and they're all the same size. The challenge you run into is by writing these numbers on them, if they cheat the system and they use the left side to 04, and they use the right side to, you know, 03. When you assemble the cabinet, which cabinet did you assemble? <laughs> did you assemble 04 or did you assemble 03? Both of You assembled both of them twice as fast. that <laughs> <laughs> right. Now that the tracking them, the problem is, is the guys look on the finished carcass for a, a cabinet number. And so somebody has to make that decision. This is 1604. They're going to go through a packing slip and, and find 1604 and make a check off that we loaded that cab. Well, the guy's taking it off the truck, do they make six, do they offload 1604 or 1603? You know, so it's, it's always kind of a challenge. And we've tried to refine the Sharpie method for years uh, and it, it doesn't work well. So when we cut, we still, as we cut on the saw and cut on the router, we still flat stack. We flat stack uh, coming out of the edge mander. We flat stack coming out of the down machine. So you can see we got the labels up here. This has all been down, and it's gone right back onto the to a flat part. We then move these flat parts, and you'll see that as fast as we can scan those labels, it tells us what cart, there's a cart number up here on these things. It tells us what cart that goes in and what slot that goes in. So now the whole time-consuming effort of writing that number on the edge of a part and then restacking it and resorting it. Uh, this is a fraction, and I mean a fraction of the time. As fast you can you can't load the cart faster than you can scan. Um, the next challenge we had, and this is one of the reasons that uh, the sorting part was a, a hidden benefit to us. Um, it was always a challenge. One of my reasons when Roger and I sat down uh, year ago or better. Um, this is one of my challenges. To load these parts onto, the, onto a truck, be it our delivery truck or onto a 53 footer, we have to handwrite this and handwrite these numbers. Hence in comes the problem, what number do you write on the finished product? Um, and then some guy has to see this number and go through several pages of an Excel spreadsheet and put a check mark. Um, it's a lot of manual work. And then when you offload the cabinets, it's the same thing. Another spreadsheet, hold on, I need to get that cabinet number. Now, Production Coach takes us from the part labels 
that uh, Mike Rillen has handed off to them. Uh, and it works with, with, all, with other design softwares too. I'm just telling you about how it works here. But um, we scan these codes, these top bar codes. And as we assemble the cabinet back at this point, we know that all the parts are in this slot. We take the slot out, we put it in the case clamp, assemble the cabinet. It comes out, you scan any barcode on that cabinet, but we know they're all the same because it sorted it for us. It will, in, it will print a yellow label, these yellow labels you'll see here. It prints this yellow label. It's very simple, it's, it's human readable. We know exactly what job it is, what room it goes in, what cabinet number it is, and a physical description of what it is. It's a two-door base cabinet. Um, we put that on the back of the cabinet. Right before we, right as we shrink wrap it, we scan that product, we scan this code again, and it prints the exact same label in another spot in the shop. So we shrink wrap it, we put it on the outside of the label, and we have this. You'll see the very end of this, when we load our trucks, we're scanning those cabinets. As fast as you can scan, you can't load the truck fast enough. There's no going through Excel spreadsheets. We know exactly what's on that truck, we know what day it was loaded, and we know what time it was loaded. Um, if something were ever happened to a truck, ends up all across <coughs> I-35 or something in some horrible event, uh, we can take that packing slip and hand it to the insurance company and say this is exactly what's on that truck. We can order parts in like um, you know, steel support brackets or wall standards or whatever the case is. Those come in the front door, so it never goes through engineering, so to speak. Uh, we add those to the packing slip. We print a label off, and it gets treated just like a cabinet from that point on. But it came in through the front door, so we also know about all the accessory things we may have shipped, maybe a box of screws or whatever the case is. So it's all captured on our packing slips, uh, be it through the front door or through, or through production. Uh, you can see this is uh, just, it's so much easier to, to load the trucks. You know it's on the trucks, a dry storage area out back, uh, and we bring things in, and. Uh, our production method is kind of a nested piece cell, so to speak. We use both the, the saw, we use the saw for all square parts. Uh, use the router for nested base manufacturing and custom <coughs> items. Uh, but we also use uh, the wiki for uh, maybe dump, dump a couple uh, back, uh, runs to the saw, and it goes to the wiki while the router's working on another one, and that frees the router up for, for custom items and templating and things like that. So what happens here at the saw, it would work the same way at the router. Uh, production coach releases this, uh, this run. So now they, they'll scan this um, here at the monitor. They'll scan this barcode. And now we know that the run has started. Um, it's just a real simple barcode. Uh, everything is cordless out here. So we know now in the office through the dashboard that the run has started, uh, and we can see how many runs we start and stop uh, every day. As we cut at the, at the saw, uh, every part is labeled at the saw, and it works the exact same way at the router. They'll scan, uh, at the router we actually scan the sheets, the optimized, optimized nest, so we'll scan the sheet, and we know the sheet was, uh, was machined on the, on the router. A little bit more maybe for some time management. Hopefully I get some data we can massage and, and kind of figure out how that works out for us. But um, there's a, a label printer both uh, here and at the, at the router. So um, as, we, as we move through, our flow is supposed to go from here. Um, right behind us, you'll see the, uh, the ABSC Acron 855 machine. Uh, it has... Um, pre meal um, it's got a heater, um, of course, blue application, uh, top and bottom uh, roughs, end trims, top and bottom final scrapings. Uh, so anyways, it goes from here, the edge vander, uh, and it'll go to the wiki. We have a BSC dowel machine that will do both six and eight millimeter dowels. Everything is barcoded. It's all uh, servo driven. The guys do very little touching of the machine. Once we get to the dial machine, the, the dial machine does read the barcodes on the parts. So it knows the thickness of the part, be it half inch, five eighths, three quarters. It knows the thickness of the part, 
where the dowels go uh, to match up. What happens down here at the end, so we've flat stacked everything. Uh, you can walk around, you'll see carts at the bottom. So at this station up here, we have our first large screen TV. Uh, what, what we're being told on this screen is uh, in cabinet one, uh, it has a cabinet ID number. It's a two door teacher cabinet. Um, and actually these are for the drawers because they're fixing to run drawer parts through the dial machine. Um, one, go ahead and rescan so scan a part for me. So he's going to show us if you rescan a part, see it says the part's already been scanned. So there's no way if a guy scans a part um, and then sets it down, goes to lunch, he comes back, scans it, he knows that part needs needs to ready have been sorted out. Go ahead and change that out. Let's move to the next, go to the new one. So now, he's going to scan another work order. So when he scans that, it tells us at the top in that red line, if you're a little closer, that red line tells us it goes in cart seven. Um, and that's the slot it goes in. It goes into slot one. Go ahead, one, hit a couple more. So he rescanned the same part, it won't take it. That one goes in slot nine. That's physically, it shows graphically where it goes as well as, you know, uh, go ahead and scan the parts. So if you notice under the nine, it says two dash seven. That's the second of seven parts in that cabinet. So the, the, the software knows if there's seven or 15 or whatever many parts are in that, in that cabinet. So he's going to go ahead and scan through those. So here, uh, he had the opportunity, if you notice, there was a thing that says marked as damaged. So if he looks at the part, he's going to sort it, and he realizes there's something wrong, he can mark that as damaged, and then it alerts us we need to re refabricate that part and catch it up so the guys don't go to, to assemble a box and it not uh, have all the, the proper parts. Okay, so we've only, for, for examples today, so we can uh, show, made two cabinets, we just put the labels on paper so we're not moving parts to the shop. So now we know that this cart is full. Production coach, uh, when everything's green, uh, we know the cart's ready to go and it'll move on. So at this next stage here at the Dow machine, uh, and this station behind me actually runs uh, both case clamps here. Our drawers are worked on this case clamp over here. Um, and we have uh, doors at the back of the shop. So what will happen is, as we scan the parts, they take all the parts out of a slot. In other words, take this whole group, they'll put it up on the table, hardware, and put it in the case clamp. It comes out of the case clamp, and he can scan any, any label. Uh, can you change that off? Yeah. So we know we have the next run being run. So he'll scan any, any label there, um, and it knows it came out of the case clamp. Go ahead and run both cabinets, hit the next cabinet group. You gotta run both so we get la labels. Um, so it gives them graphically what is, what is uh, we're building. So this does two things at this, at this station. It tells us that the cabinets are now, we now have carcasses built, so we can track the carcass on the dashboard. It tells production coach that this slot is empty, and once we build the whole thing, it tells production coach that the cart is now ready, and it'll reassign a cart automatically. Um, it'll daisy chain carts. Uh, our optimum release, depending on the complexity of the cabinet, is uh, you know, 30 to 45 cabinets. It's a manageable amount through all the equipment. Um, so, if we have, if it day, if it knows it needs to daisy chain two or three carts together, it will do that. Uh, and if for some reason, you push something in front of that cart. It, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, production coach keeps track of those carts for us. So then we end up uh, after we bring it out of the case clamp, we end up with the carcass right here on the floor. So now we're. Uh, uh, assembling and, and, and inserting the drawers. Uh, the drawers were tracked the same way as the boxes. The doors are tracked the same way. We know we have all the parts. Uh, 
They can put the toe kicks on, insert the doors, the drawers. Paper tells them, actually the label on the cabinet tells them what run it is. So he'll call it up, he'll scan this, this cabinet. Uh, the label automatically prints. So we end up with um, two of the yellow labels. We now know the cabinet is ready to ship. It's accounted for, it's ready to ship. And we end up with these two labels here. Um, the two, two labels that came off of the parts labels as we tracked them through the shop. Because these were all the part labels on the, on the individual pieces. Um, and then when, we, when the cabinet's built, we now get a shipping label. Uh, at this point, we know the cabinet's ready, and we'll come back over here. Um, the way our shop flow works, as you can see, when we build things, it has to leave in a hurry. Um, so you can see the, the yellow labels. As we shrink wrap them, um, they'll bring the scanner out. They'll scan that, that, they'll bring the scanner out, they'll scan. This label is basically on the back of a, uh, um, it's on the back of the cabinet. So at this point, it goes on the on the on the outside of the of the outside of the uh, wrapping. So now we know we can ship it. As we get to the shipping part, um, so now as they go to load the boxes, uh, the way we set up our shipping uh, tickets is every semi we we try to pre-produce, we put it on semi-trucks, uh, make sure they got uh, radiant barrier uh, ceilings on them. Uh, it's fully insured and ready to roll. And we know that truck number that's on the front of every semi, it's also in that same backside. Uh, and we can park the trucks here. So go ahead and scan, scan that one. So he's got a green label, he can load it. Scan this one. So if he grabbed a cabinet that goes on a completely different job, it tells the guys, with it, did you hear the audio, did you hear the horn blow, and it turned red. The only thing that can go on that truck is what engineering, when they release this, they pre-build the, uh, the shipper. And they, like I said, we build, you know, 30 to 40. Runs one, two, three, and four, and they merge them together, and it's all on one shipper. So no matter what run it came out of, they can keep scanning provided it was assembled in that, in that way. If they grab the wrong cabinet, it won't. Uh, it just loaded. So now it turns yellow. So here we run into another problem. The guy scanned it. It's supposed to be on the truck, but it's not on the truck. So what happened? Somebody got, got ahead of themselves. They decide it's time to go to lunch. And with the checkoff method, they maybe checked it off and then they didn't load it because they went to lunch. Uh, here we know, and the report tells us, go ahead and finish loading the truck. So now the truck is full. We set a printer up out here. Uh, they're gonna print a, a shipping ticket and you'll see um, exactly how many were supposed to be on there. It shows how many were shipped, and there's a back order column, and that back order column needs to be zero. Otherwise, engineering said, hey, we're supposed to have 180 Sport 7 cabinets on that truck. There's only 186. And if I go to that bottom receipt, that bottom page, and there's a one or whatever in back order, we're missing something that was supposed to be on that truck. Okay. So they're typing in the truck number. It could be our own delivery, it could be will call, it could be the semi truck, whatever the case is. So uh, they'll print this off. And once they print that off, well actually now that they have it, we'll let them print it off. Um, EMS, uh, we've worked with EMS and production coaches worked with EMS to uh, come up with a great scanning device. Uh, it can be used in the field on your cell phone. We found uh, that using a true scanner like you would use at Home Depot, um, a little bit more robust. Uh, the guys don't have to worry about their cell phones dying and the girlfriend calling or anything like that. Uh, it's just a scanner that, and it's worked out very well for us. So 
this report is what I was showing you here a second ago. It actually tells the name of the cabinet just like it says on this yellow label. Um, it's a two-door upper, so it gives us the cabinet name, number and cabinet names. Very simple. If you had to do a manual unload or check, simple for the guys to understand. It tells us the dimension of the cabinet, width, height, and depth. Um, it tells us there should be one. It shows we shipped one, and it shows the back order is zero. Had we not scanned it all, this back order had been one. It tells us at the bottom how many items are on that truck. So when we show up at a job site, and that superintendent, you know, they never blamed the cabinet guy. How many cabinets really got on there? We just take this off, and here's the cabinet. And it tells us that we loaded it on April 16th at 10.45 and 9 seconds. And the other one was, uh, the first one was loaded at 10.43 and 44 seconds. Probably a little too tired on the time, but they love it. They love it. There's no, no goofing around, right? So now we're in the field, and maybe it's the next day, maybe it's uh, a month later. They weren't ready for uh, offload. So everything's on the truck, this is on the truck, saved on the computer, whatever we have to do. So at this point, Ken's going to show us as we go to, to offload. Now you don't see any of this on any monitors because you know we're 100 miles away out in the middle of a project site, right? So uh, it's just if you get uh, Wi-Fi or power, you're good to go. So he's going to scan these. So, uh, I don't have a microphone, so I'll speak loud here, but basically we got production codes loaded up right here and the job that's open. So the tags that they've placed on these individual cabinets, once they're ready to receive, they just basically scan and it'll show green that's been received. So that cabinet's been received. Scan the next one. Now both cabinets have been received. So the and rescan re one of those. Yeah, if you rescan. They'll tell you that it's already been scanned, so you, you can't scan it twice. You can't make any mistakes like that. Yeah. So the beauty of it is, um, as he was saying, is you don't have to use your iPhone. You don't have to have uh, Wi-Fi. If you don't have it, you can use SIM card, and all of it takes place. Reports back to production coach. Everything's received. But it's it's a remote deal. Everything's kept in the cloud. From from this point, it hits the cloud. Uh, we will look at that on our computer we'll print that off and now we can also give the, the, the customer not only do they have this uh, paper to start with they have the other paper so when it comes to pay applications and did you really deliver those cabinets did you really offload them how many cabinets were here for, for uh, percentage of billings it's very simple to give them that one and there's no doubt that it was offloaded uh, and it takes care of all the check marks Roger, we were talking about um, uh, some new technology. We just we just mentioned it to me. It's it's been released. Yeah, I'm sure. What was it? It was uh, on, on the sorting system. Oh yes. As opposed to having to look at the screen, you can have over a headset and a person, some person. I don't know if they have control over the voice, but it'll tell you what slot to put it. So did everybody hear that? What are you saying is you don't instead of just getting the visual, you can actually get an audio of where the the parts go with the sorting device. So I got to have to keep looking up. He can just keep doing his business and, and walking back and forth. Yes. How many stations do you have? So there's the start one in engineering. Yes. So we have uh, we have eight. We added eight monitors to the shop to handle the doors, the drawers, the sorting. Uh, we have two shipping stations because of the way we wanted to do it. Um, we wanted that label on the box, so when they cut this shrink wrap off, they throw it away, you still know what label it is, right? What cabinet it is. But sometimes it's hard to scan through the shrink wrap. So we do that, we chose to do that twice. We have eight stations um, out here, and then we have the, the, the main station, I guess, in the, in the office uh, that communicates from microvellum. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you said there was two in shipping? Why yeah. Do you have two? Well, so one is scanned over here, and we know that the, the cabinet is ready to ship, and we put that yellow sticker on the box. So, and then we scan it again, and we put that yellow sticker on the shrink wrap. So now, we don't have to scan through the shrink wrap to get to the label on the box, but in the field, when they cut the plastic off, 
uh, you got rid of this label, but this still tells me uh, what room it goes in. And they can look at my shop drawings, they know what cabinet it is. So uh, we chose to do two. And we do uh, our shipping labels in, a, in an alternate color, uh, like yellow. So it's very simple to see where you're supposed to be loading or not loading. It's another visual uh, effect of that. Right, and the accessories, like poles and all that kind of stuff, where does that come from? So the poles, um, Christy will put that in in the office. She'll add that, or, or Warren will put it in. Uh, we, we put that in in the office. It can be added out here, uh, but we just add it and we print the labels off in there. Instead of stopping the production guys, you got two boxes of poles and a box of supports. You put it in, you print your labels off, put it on those. Um, the next thing while we're speaking of that, when you take your box of poles and your two cases of steel supports, um, you can actually create what's called a pallet. And now you can put it on a pallet and shrink wrap the pallet. So when they offload, they can offload the pallet and then it will identify those three or four, or 10 or 15 items that were on that pallet. It'll check them all off. Um, so you wouldn't have to scan all 15 items if you palletized it uh, or shrink wrap it, you know, like, like our fillers. Uh, maybe we'll ship the uh, fillers in eight foot sticks and make 10 to a package. Instead of scanning all these fillers, we know there's 80 feet in there. We call it 80 foot of filler, shrink wrap it up, scan it, and then we know how many feet of filler we have. Very good question though. See? Yes. The shipping documents, as they're completed, does that automatically uh, activate uh, invoicing? So, yeah, so Brad asked if this packing slip automate, uh, automatically uh, automates uh, invoicing. Probably most of y'all, because of the once a month billing, it doesn't automatically initiate it, but it definitely gives us backup. You know, if you're like me, they want to see the, the pictures and they want to see the this. Well, we can send them pictures and we send them a PDF of this attached with the pictures and they can see a picture of this label and they can find it on their packing slip and they can see a picture of that truck and if they want to come crawl through it, they're more than welcome to. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't initiate invoicing, but it definitely substantiates uh, invoicing. For sure. So um, we can, uh, if you want to walk around the shop and look, uh, the different. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Google Calendar as part of the software. So we have the Google Calendar. We have not implemented the Google, Google Calendar part. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, when Roger and I talked, and maybe I said this earlier, my challenge was shipping. Being sure that it was on the job site, we did a project down in the Austin area, it's a five-story hospital. The fifth floor, floor is a shell, and we delivered every week for, you know, every Monday for many, many weeks in a row. And there'd be a cabinet missing here and a cabinet missing there, and I know we rebuilt several cabinets. At the end of the job, they're going through the job, and they're, everyone's got to get all the things out of the first four floors and put it in the shell upstairs. I walked up and there was uh, over 200 lineal feet of countertop and there's probably 35 or 40 cabinets. Um, some of them were kind of dinged up because the electrician would snag it and put it in an electrical room and use it as a workbench. Of course you can't get in there because you put high voltage on it. Um, things got in the way. Cleaning crews were just putting them in these rooms, stacking stuff up, and that's a pretty expensive lesson. And I had to, I kept saying, we know it's on site. Well, how do you know it's on site? Look, see the check mark in the box? We marked that thing off twice. We don't know you did that. We really don't. Uh, this here, I mean, the doubters will be the doubters, but there's a lot more uh, confidence in technology handling this stuff. Um, and that was really a thorn to me. What I got over here in the sorting I mean, like I said, we had our Sharpie method down pretty good, still struggled with it, and the time that we saved was unbelievable. And Rogers asked me, you know, is it, you know, 50 times faster, you know, 100 times faster? I haven't really been able to put that on, on a, a system yet, 
But if you can imagine a guy going through and marking the parts and then sorting them, as opposed to just scanning and, and like, enormous amount of time savings. So with us working in those systems, uh, the Google Calendar for production will come in. We're trying to gather data so we can set that up logically instead of just throwing an arbitrary number out. Um, that will be one of our next steps. We did buy it, but we have not implemented a calendar part of it yet. Yeah, very good question. Anybody else? Um, okay, you're welcome to, to walk around the shop, uh, the equipment manufacturers, ask them questions, watch our guys.